Hi and welcome back to Switch and Lever. Have you ever taken apart a really old bus? If not, I can thoroughly recommend it. It's filled to the brim with absolutely neat stuff. And this is exactly what I had the chance of doing with this old city bus. And while there's lots of things that can be mentioned about this specific bus, I figured we would focus on one thing, the driver's side fan. For those hot days when driving around screaming school children is driving you absolutely insane. Just turn on the fan, lean back, close your eyes and imagine the wind blowing through your hair. Except don't do that because you're a balding bus driver and you're about to run into a tree. The awesome thing about this particular model of fan is that it's been in constant production since at least the 1950s and can still be purchased today. With something that can make you look this cool, how can you go wrong? Electrically the fan couldn't be simpler. It runs on 24 volts and it has a rotary switch in the back. Apply correct power, flip the switch and the fan spins. Easy as that. My thinking was though that a desk fan would be a lot more useful as I lack a vehicle and summers are hell to work in front of a computer. It's not however as simple as just placing it on a table, we need something to mount it on. Straight out of the junk pile comes this auspicious helium container. We can probably chop the top off to mount the fan on, hopefully without blowing ourselves up in the process. I cannot stress this enough, make sure the gas cylinder you're using is empty, especially if it contains any sort of combustible gas. Depress the valve and empty out the gas. If you can't hear any rush of gas exiting the cylinder, you can be reasonably sure that it's empty. Of course, you could never know for sure until you slowly, slowly... Once you've made sure there's no gas in the cylinder, mark where you want to cut off the top. Wide masking tape makes an easy way to get an even mark all around the cylinder. If you've done the previous steps correctly, you should not experience any explosion as you break out the angle grinder. Take your time and make the cut as neat as possible. Even so, you're probably going to want to clean the jagged edges left by the angle grinder and smooth out any unevenness that may remain. The rim will be the base of the fan, so any unevenness will mean a wobbly end product. As the cylinder is already painted, prepping it for another color is fairly easy. Remove any labels with a hot air gun and clean up with some ethanol or other suitably mild solvent. Don't use something like acetone as it will eat into the existing paint. Follow this by scuffing the paint up with a fine scotch brite pad. This is so the new coat of paint will stick better to the base. Of course, before we get carried away, we need to add holes for the hardware. Since I didn't want this to have a permanent cable connected at all times, I installed a barrel jack to the back of the base. I also marked out holes for four screws which will hold the base plate inside the base in place and act as a proper bottom to the base enclosure and also make sure you could never touch any live wires. Drill out the hole slowly with plenty of lubrication and make sure you've center punched the positions properly to stop the drill from wandering on the surface of your cylinder. Start by priming your base with a good primer to give the paint the best possible chance of adhering to the old paint. If you feel really enthusiastic you could strip the old paint using a wire brush but this should be just fine. After the primer dried thoroughly, the base was painted with a few layers of a good quality automotive black spray paint to give a good strong coat without the need for additional clear coating. This should probably have been done before painting, but who cares about planning ahead. Mark and drill out the positions you want to attach the arm for the fan. Start with a small diameter drill and finish off with one that's the proper size for the bolt. While drilling, also drill a slightly bigger hole in between the two mounting holes, as that's where we will enter with the cable from the fan into the base. 
For this reason, filing a small notch in the bottom part of the fan arm is also a good idea so we don't pinch the cable. Make sure all the sharp edges are appropriately filed down, not to cause any undue wear on the cable over time. Solder some wires to your barrel jack and attach a couple of connectors. I chose spade connectors, but screw terminals would work just as well if you're working with exposed wires. Now we need a bottom for the base. The easiest is just to measure the inside diameter of the base, mark the corresponding diameter on a piece of plywood, cut it out and sand it down until it fits properly. Now it's all just a matter of putting the pieces together. The barrel jack is mounted first and the cables from the fan are pulled in and connected with the barrel jack. Before moving onwards, make sure that the fan is working and spinning in the right direction. If it's not, simply flip the cables around, as the fan is likely spinning backwards and reversing the poles fixes this issue. Once it's done, insulate the connectors with electrical tape to prevent possibility of short-circuiting the fan. The arm is attached with regular machine screws and locking nuts on the inside. Finally, the fan can again be attached to the arm and we can get an idea of the final result. The base plate we made before is added to cap everything off. As it's just made from plywood, it can be a good idea to pre-drill the holes before attaching the screws, to avoid that the plywood splits when driving a screw into the side grain. Here is for a little surprise, the dot over the eye as we say in Sweden. Those two new holes will be used to attach a custom etched brass plate, forever dubbing this fan as the Faninator. It's just simply riveted in with copper rivets for a nice and classy finish. If you're wondering how this brass plate came to be, rest assured that I will cover this in a future video. That's it, now you have something to cool off in warm summer days. Something that looks amazing in almost any decor. It delivers a surprising amount of air circulation for its size, and I assume using a dimmer you could get this to run at different speeds than the two settings provided by twisting the switch at the back. If you're interested in getting this particular fan model for a build of your own, they do show up from time to time on eBay or other sites dealing with replacement parts for old cars and buses. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this project and that you'll check out some of the previous projects from Switch and Lever. Be sure to follow on Instagram as well while you're waiting for the next project to be released. Until next time!